Bonjour du monde and welcome to Musings of the Fox. So yeah, I've gone full fox. I decided to break out my fox kigurumi for this video and let you guys know the musings of the fox. What the, the fuck? Is that popular? No, it's not popular anymore. Let's not bring up references from years ago, shall we? And I want to say thank you to all my new subscribers and all the people who have been here since the beginning. Trust me, I actually know who you are. I have a list. I know who you are. I know. <laughs> and I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background info on me. I have a list of about, yeah, I think it's 20 questions. Let's play 20 questions um, of Musings of the Fox. And yeah. Get started. So the first question is where did your channel name come from? Which is a great question because where does musings of a fox come from? First off, um, the fox part because I think that's probably where most people are kind of wondering is like why are you calling yourself a fox? Like are you like super conceited and think you're foxy? Well I think I am pretty foxy. I, I will fully admit to thinking I'm pretty foxy, but no, um, the fox part actually came from my husband's nickname for me back when we were just a boyfriend-girlfriend couple. Back in college, um, my hair had faded from a, a pretty, why am I combining some old photos to insert in this? Um, had faded from like a nice crimson color, I dyed it to a horrible orange, and um, I was kind of insecure about it, but my husband was really sweet and kept telling me I was just his little fox and then it kind of turned into renard which is um, fo uh, fox in French and so one of my first um, usernames was red fox in French and then when I started like a little kind of knitting side business that became red fox knits and so like the whole red fox besides foxes being one of my absolute favorite animals. Um, it kind of just stuck and became kind of my nickname, my kind of signature animal. And yeah, so once I was going to make a YouTube channel, it was actually going to first be Red Fox Beauty, but I didn't want it to just be limited to beauty because I have ideas for this channel that go beyond, you know, just my love of makeup and it, you know, goes into body positivity and social activism and lots of things. So, you know, what beyond, you know, Red Fox Beauty. So I was like, hey, these are my musings. These are my ideas. And so yeah, Musings of a Fox was born. So ta-da! And I always greet you guys with bonjour tout le monde because my husband is French and we both speak French. And so I just like the little nod to him at the beginning of every video of saying hello in our other communal language besides English. <laughs> Question number two, are you named after anyone? Why well, yes, yes I am. Thank you for, I'm not even sure which one that came from. Um, I am named after, my whole name actually comes from people. Um, my first name, Gabrielle, is I am named after my mom's best friend who unfortunately passed away. My mom was pregnant with me, so I have her, she had a double first name, so I have the Gabrielle from her and then the other half of her first name my sister has as a middle name, so that, yes, I am named after someone. Thank you for asking. <laughs> That's also why my name is Gabrielle and not Gabrielle, because I'm named after a specific person who pronounced it a specific way, and therefore my name is Gabrielle. But, you know, shout out to all the Gabrielles out there. I feel ya. And, you know, to the Gabriels too, I get called that as well. So, also, Gabby is a perfectly acceptable name to call me, but if you want to use my full name, it is Gabrielle. Question three. What is your favorite song at the moment? That's a good question. Um, that song of Katy Perry's and Nicki Minaj's, Swish Swish, is constantly stuck in my head, just like all the time. Like, there's something about that line, like, this, you know, Swish Swish, another one in the basket, and then later on, another one in the casket. That just speaks to all my, like, gothy, witchy goodness of, like, <laughs> another one in the casket. So, that's the song that keeps playing on repeat in my head, and then I think, like most of the people in the universe, I am obsessed with Despacito. I am not a Justin Bieber fan, but I am a like Latin pop. Uh, yeah, Latin pop. I don't want to call it Latin army, but like that sound is kind of the kind of music I grew up with. So Despacito, the original, the Justin Bieber, I don't care. Just mm, Despacito. Yes. So yeah, those are my... <laughs> Those are my top songs that are constantly stuck in my head, so I'm going to call them my favorites for the moment. 
Question four. What would you name your children? <laughs> um, so the girl's name I'm keeping secret because I love it too much and I don't want anyone else to know it. Um, but the boy's name, if I ever have a boy, is an open secret. I don't even know if it's a secret if it's open. Um, it was actually in my wedding vows. Um, my husband and I are gigantic Star Trek nerds. I'm not gonna call us Trekkies or Trekkers, we're just Star Trek nerds. And we are going to name our first or only son uh, Jean-Luc after Jean-Luc Picard. Because um, Patrick's a bit of a hard name for a kid, so yeah. He'll be named after one of the greatest starship captains. Captain Jean-Luc Picard and yeah again like I said we're Francophiles he's French so and he needs a good French name and why not kill or honor two birds with one name yeah <laughs> that sounds about right question five what is your favorite Instagram account so my favorite Instagram accounts actually have nothing to do with makeup or beauty or fashion or any of that my two favorite must check everyday Instagram accounts are one Juniper Fox. It should be obvious. They, this woman lives my dream. She is like schooled, I believe, in, you know, wilderness vet biology. And so she has um, a red fox. She just adopted a fox with disabilities. She has a gorgeous doggy named Moose. She has two sugar gliders, a chameleon, a tarantula. Oh my gosh, her tarantula cutest freaking tarantula. Its toesies are pink and I'm obsessed and yeah it's the best Instagram. It makes my day. She does a lot of videos, her Insta stories, everything about that account is just pure love and pure happiness and it's just fantastic. I wish I could be her friend. Not just to like play with her foxes because she is just such a fantastic human that I want to know a human like her. The second tied for favorite is the Black Jaguar White Tiger account, which is this man who was like, I don't know if he was a millionaire, he was a rich guy living the life in LA, went on a vacation to Mexico, and somehow wound up rescuing a Black Jaguar cub, and has now made it his life to rescue animals in Mexico from circuses, from private cages on rooftops. He's just, I think he has maybe 500 animals at this point. He has created a sanctuary for big cats and posts videos every, and photos every day of these big cats that he hand raises. And it is another account that is just full of love and beautiful, beautiful creatures that are being saved and giving the most amazing care. And I, I need that in this world right now. I need animal accounts of people who gave up a life of, you know, glamour to do the hard, heartbreaking work of um, animal rescue. And it's just, it's highly, highly recommend if you just need some beauty in your life and lots of adorable, gorgeous creatures. <laughs> Question six, what is your favorite book? Hmm, it's actually a hard one. Um, <laughs> I wanna cop out and give series. Um, you know, one book I've read countless times that I really love is A Dirty Job by Christopher Moore. He's a local Bay Area author. He writes a lot of really funny, kind of dirty um, books and they're just great. He does a lot of supernatural things. His whole series is fantastic. They're all kind of California based. Um, but Dirty Job is my favorite and it's just, I can't even describe it um, except for it's a guy who after the loss of his wife is trying to raise his baby and he thinks he's become a grim reaper. That's about all I can tell you and then insane San Francisco hijinks ensue but all of his books are, are an absolute recommend but that is my favorite book that I can read and find something new and fantastic every time I read it. That's a deep question. Question seven, if you were another person, would you be a friend of yourself? I really hope so. Honestly, that's, honest, that's, that's really how I live my life, is not about, I guess I, was, I r was raised to care for other people and expecting that as you care for other people, people will care for you back. And so yeah, I would really want a friend like myself because I, 
don't expect things of people. I just love, I really try to listen to people. I kind of view myself as a bit of an empath. And so I'm the one you can tell all your problems to and I don't get mentally and emotionally taxed by it. I really just want to let my friends unwind, unleash, and yeah, not like necessarily a therapist. I don't give advice unless it's asked. I just like to be a place where my friends can feel safe and just speak their truth. And yeah, I, <laughs> not to say I'm not a pain in the butt sometimes. I'm a total pain in the butt. But at the end of the day, I'm still someone you can count on in like your hardest, darkest moments. If you just need an ear to talk off, that won't speak back. I absolutely can be that for someone. And so yeah, I'd really, I'd like, I'd like to think that I, I would pick myself as well. But I've also surrounded myself with people who, like I said, give it back to me. So I think I like myself, but I'm covered. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Number eight, what are your hobbies? My hobbies are old lady hobbies. I actually, when I'm not, you know, playing with makeup or trolling around in pretty clothes, my hobbies are knitting and quilting. I like obsessively love them. <laughs> Wherever I go, whatever city I visit, I have to go to the local yarn shop and pick up a skein or two. Um, I even did that in Paris. We found the most gorgeous like shopping gallery, little side street thing, and I picked up way too much yarn. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, hand knit, I, you know, make clothes, I make socks, I make tons and tons of scarves, and I quilt. I'm currently in the middle of a giant quilting project, and I do all my quilting by hand, completely by hand, piecework, quilting by hand, and I love the tedium. It really helps me, you know, it's my time to think and work through problems while I'm just doing the repetitive sewing and poking my fingers and trying not to bleed on my quilts. But yeah, so if, you, um, if you're ever wondering what I'm doing when I'm not living that, that amazing um, <laughs> YouTube life, <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting all cuddled up with my guy and my cat. Um, quilting or sewing, quilting or knitting. <laughs> Number nine, what is your favorite perfume? Hmm, so I have three because I need perfumes for different. Well, one of them I actually didn't even know was still in existence until I went to Paris and I saw it in the Sephora on the Champs Elysees and I had an absolute nostalgia moment and my husband bought it for me as my birthday present. It is a More More by Cacharelle. It's not sold in major US stores. The only place I found it are like outlet malls and they're always old bottles that smell off, that set off my allergies. I found this bottle in Paris. They had a bunch of Amor Amores, like all these spin-offs of it that I didn't even know existed. I got the original red bottle and it smells exactly <laughs> like when I used to wear it in high school and it just smells so sweet. And so it's my um, fun night out perfume and it just smells delicious and I love it. My everyday scent is the vanilla passion fruit from La Vanille. La Vanilla. <laughs> I love it. It's just a beautiful, warm, warm, all my scents are warm scents. Um, I like scents that kind of stick on your skin and are smelled by someone like near you, hugging you, um, versus like a scent when you walk by. And so I like really warm scents and the La Vanilla Passion Fruit. Passion Fruit is my favorite scent of anything, but to mix it with vanilla just makes it not too sweet. It's just a warm, really beautiful scent. And then the third is my scent that I wore for my wedding day, which is actually Ariana Grande's um, Ari perfume, I believe it is. And it's in a beautiful, like, old Hollywood glass bottle. It's a like a rose gold colored liquid with a little poof and it smells fantastic. Everyone on my wedding day was kind of stealing it from me but it's fine because it just made everyone smell like me and it's just a scent I really treasure. You know it's real when the hair goes up and I'm just too, too hot. Uh, it's the middle of July and I'm wearing a Kigurumi. This wasn't the most well thought out plan but we're doing it. Number 10, what is your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday should surprise anyone, it's Halloween. Um, from scary movies to incredible costumes and makeup and just getting, honestly I feel on Halloween a lot of people are just their truest selves. They're either dressing up like they thought they never could, they're dressing up to show off their skills and makeup, um, or they're just letting their freak flag fly. And so I love Halloween, I love candy, I love scary movies with my friends, um, so yeah. 
Actually, this is when I, that's when I bought this Kigurumi, was for Halloween of 2015? Yeah, 2015, and um, I was a vixen, but I'm Ching. A vixen's a female fox, so I dress in like pretty glam makeup in a fox costume with my bra showing. Vixen. <laughs> so yes, Halloween, so excited, always. Number 11, do you have any pets? I do. Hubby and I have an eight-year-old Maine Coon Mix Rescue that we adopted for our one-year anniversary back in college. He is the fluffiest love of my life. He's like my, I guess my husband's my best friend. My have other, he's like my third best friend. We're like tied with my husband. He's just the best creature the universe ever invented. And I, let me see if I can make him have a on-screen cameo. I think he's gonna hate this, but we're gonna do it to him anyway. Hi guys, so this is Tucker. <laughs> Why babies? He's like his daddy just handed him to me and he doesn't know what's happened. This is Tucker's. He's like, look at all these lights and it's hot in here. I know. This is my baby. And he is just the best thing that ever happened to me besides my husband. Yeah, we have long cuddles. And if you follow me on Instagram at, at Musings of a Fox, you will see occasional Instagram stories of him and his giant fluffiness. He's about 16 pounds of cat. He's a big boy. <laughs> you don't like my dog, but you're weight on the internet. I, I feel you, bud. So yeah, this is this is my babies. His pretty face. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let him down now so he doesn't hate me for the rest of his nine lives. <laughs> so that was my cat, pulling up with my crap. Much thanks to my cat. <laughs> so yes, I have a pet, and that's my pet. That's my boo-boos. So question 12, have you ever been out of the country? I have, besides my obvious first video on YouTube, which was my lookbook from my honeymoon to Paris and Bordeaux. I have also been to England, Belgium, and the Netherlands. I obviously have so many more adventures to go on. I hope to one day live in France for at least a little while, which will make exploring um, other countries a lot easier. But yeah, I definitely want to see the world. I'm definitely, you know, a world traveler type. I always love a good adventure. So yeah, I have much, much more of the world to see and much, much more of the US. I've actually been to most of the 50 states, but um, there's still some tip top ones on the edges that I haven't been to yet. Number 13, do you speak any different languages? I do. Oui, je parle couramment le français. Um, I have been studying French since about 8th grade, which is a lot longer ago than I want. About 14 years. Um, I guess technically I started in 2002, so that would be about 15 years coming this fall. So yeah, I've been studying French for 15 years. It was one of my majors in college, and as I've done countless times, my husband is French. So yes, we speak French together. I was very fortunate on our honeymoon in France to speak, I'd say, about 85-90% French while I was there, and it was an amazing experience, which is why I so desperately want to live there for a time. Um, but yeah. Um, if you're French speakers, say bonjour or salut down in the comments. Um, we'll, we'll have some chair chatter back and forth in French. Um, I don't speak it, but I can read and translate a bit of ancient Greek. I took that in college as a class for um, two quarters. And yeah, I don't speak modern Greek. Maybe someday I will, but yeah, I, I know some, some ancient some ancient Greek. So yeah, that's that's sexy. Them dead languages. Um, so yeah. So but French, oui. Uh, le français et l'anglais, c'est tu. Pour maintenant. <laughs> do you have any siblings? I do. Biologically, I have my older sister. Her name is Karina. She is a brilliant pain in my butt, as all older sisters are. Um, she is four years older than me, and yeah, she's awesome. If you ever hear me ranting or raving about service dogs on Instagram, that is because she has made me a service dog aunt, and I am very active with disability rights because my sister has cerebral palsy, and so yeah, I am very much um, an activist for my sister because she is fantastic and amazing when she's not driving me insane. And yeah, it's been 
an honor to be her sister and to get exposed to that magnificent community that she's a part of and just understand the amazing things in the world beyond, you know, one's own limited experience. And yeah, so yeah, I have my older sister and then technically I have two younger brothers-in-laws who I've known since they were teenagers in high school um, as the brothers of my husband and he also has a sister. So in a way I have four siblings, um, one of which is my own by blood and then I have the three others through my marriage and I love them all. They all drive me insane but I think that's in the bylaws of being a sibling. So there you go. What is your favorite store? That's a tough one. Like, it doesn't say makeup, it doesn't say clothes, it just says, what's your favorite store? <sighs> eh, eh. I honestly want to say any yarn store. Um, okay, two. I'll give you one beauty-ish one and a non-beauty one. Um, imagine it in San Francisco. If you are a knitter or a crocheter or someone who wants to get into, let's call them fiber arts, imagine it in San Francisco is an incredible store. It is in the Castro, it's right next to Dolores Park. It is floor to ceiling yarn in every price point, every kind of fiber, and the colors, it's just a beautiful store. The staff is fantastic. The owner has a little tiny doggy who is terrified of people, but still can't resist, like running out from the back of the store, booping you on the leg with its adorable cold nose, and running right back behind the counter, never to be seen for the rest of your visit. Um, but imagine it is a fantastic store. I just, I love going there. It makes me feel so safe in my craft and confident and surrounded by people who really want what's best for me and my project. And yeah, it's just one of my favorite places in the whole world. Um, number two is, a, is Lush. Lush is my favorite um, beauty store. I don't really want to say MAC or Sephora or Ulta. Really Lush is where I just, it's, I know the scents can be overwhelming and for someone who has breathing issues, I totally understand, but Lush, I just, I love smelling all the new things. I love that they're handmade. I love that they're ethically made. I love that there's so many different things for every, like, different person's needs and you get to try the stuff and smell the stuff and it's just, yeah, I was just there last weekend um, and it was just so fantastic. I re, um, discovered my favorite you know facial cleansing method and so it makes me excited to take care of my skin when I love the products I use and Lush always does that for me so yeah <laughs> I don't know if a Lush haul will ever be on this channel because I'm not much of a hauler but um yes Lush if you want recommendations for water like things to get from Lush because I'm not a bath bomb user. I don't use bath bombs. I use like actual skincare and body care from Lush. So if you have questions, I have tons of answers. What is your favorite restaurant? <sighs> These questions are harder than I thought. Um, okay. My favorite restaurant, which is like my go-to comfy, go to almost all hours because it's open so late. I don't see you saw like a flicker because I thought of like my ultimate favorite place which is Freebirds in Isla Vista, California because I'm a gaucho from UCSB and Freebirds is the place to go at all hours literally they're they used to be open 24 hours when I was a student I think they kind of scaled it back um the best quesarito and nachos sober or drunk you will ever have but that's a hard journey for most people to make just to go to Santa Barbara for some nachos. So worth it. But um, locally, since I live in the Bay Area and I don't live in Santa Barbara anymore, um, is La Penca Azul in Alameda, California. It's um, another late open. I think they're open to like 3 a.m. Um, I've never had their nachos. I go there for their quesadillas, which are the most incredible shredded chicken quesadillas, or their super famosa, which is a gigantic burrito, the length of your forearm, smothered in in red sauce and it is so good and I can go there after work I you know after my wedding dress shopping we took our whole gang there and we all ate there before going out for drinks um, I've gone out there like 1 a.m. after filming a video my husband was like hey you're hungry let me take you to something delicious so La Pink Azul in Alameda if you're in Alameda kind of local like I was from middle school and high school that was like the spot you went to and so yeah it's like a local watering hole with amazing food 
must must visit if you're in the Bay Area. Absolutely recommend. <gasps> I get out of breath talking about food because food is so good and I'm like so wanting these things even though I already ate dinner but just the thought of like mouth-wateringly delicious food is like mm, that sounds good for future stomach but not for now stomach because now stomach already has food. Alrighty. Number 17. How would you describe your fashion sense? I actually just had this conversation with my husband the other day. So I, I figured this out because I ha I don't have like the kind of, I guess you can call me eclectic, I don't have like a um, cultural like aesthetic that you could pinpoint. Like I'm not a hipster, I'm not a goth or a metalhead or a preppy. Do you even describe things as people as preppy anymore? Maybe. Um, so my aesthetic is if Tim Burton did a reimagining of The Wizard of Oz, I would be Glenda, the good witch. I love dressing witchy. Um, I, despite all my glam and my poppy colors, I love metal and horror and true crime and all the dark sides of things. And I just don't, I was told, you know, in high school when I was like, okay, I'm gonna dye all my clothes black, only wear black, throw all black. And a friend of mine was like, don't dress to match your tastes in music or what you think people expect you to dress like for what you are into. Dress the way you, that makes you happy. And so some days I am dressed in all black, head to toe, lace, dark lipstick, vampy eyes. I mean, just feeling all my gothy metal oats. And then other days I am dressed like a spring flower in the brightest pastels you can find. And so I'm part Glenda, part Tim Burton. So if he, you know, if he is ever looking for an actress, you know, I could do that for you. Um, so I would totally be in like a distressed black and peach ball, like ballerina ball gown. I, that would be like a dream dress. Like my wedding dress was sterling gray and I had like magenta hair. So if you're wondering what my fashion days is, like that's, that's my fashion sense. My gray poofy, um, uh, I don't even know what the material was. I'll, I'll figure it out, it'll be done here. Um, but yeah, my gray poofy ball gown with hot magenta hair. That's my fashion style. <laughs> my fashion style is my own. I wear whatever I like, no matter if it fits other things I have, I make them work together. And so yeah, so uh, you know, if you're into kooky, witchy, yet poppy, bright, flowy, girly, yet, uh, you know, masculine, I'm all those things. I will someday, at some point, have something for you, I promise. <laughs> promise or just watch me dress up and look like a weirdo that's cool too I totally totally am on board with that that's totally fine <laughs> some days I wear kikurumis and that's cool too number 18 who are some of your favorite youtubers obviously when one of your best friends is vintage or tacky I'm going to name drop her left and right because she is incredible um, I am only friends with her because I was obsessed obsessive little nerdy girl who have been watching her since I was in college and I happened to go into the Mac she worked at and fangirled like the dorkiest dork you could ever imagine just like hyperventilating and coveting what she helped me buy and then because we're both Bay Area types we just kept running into each other over and over again she will try to have you believe that she like plants of them but I, I don't she just has to explain something because we ran into each other so much that eventually she one day was like, can we just be friends? Like, let's just, let's just be friends now. So yeah, she's absolutely one of my favorite people in the entire universe. I'm sure most of you are subscribed to her and a lot of you have found me through her. And if you say that, that'll just make me so happy because she and I are very much two peas in a kooky weird pod. And yeah, if you love her, hopefully you'll like me. And if you somehow like me and don't know about her, you need to do yourself a favor and just subscribe and watch all of her videos. Just clockwork orange that stuff and get indoctrinated because she's fantastic. Besides my obvious bias, um, one of my favorite YouTubers is um, Pixie Woo, um, Sam and Nick. 
I've been watching them since early YouTube as well. I had the great fortune to meet them a few years ago. They are as sweet, as wonderful, as humble, as beautiful as you think they are as they come across on camera. They are disgustingly beautiful women. Like you can hope that half of it is YouTube magic. It's not. They are gorgeous, beautiful women inside and out. So sweet, so kind. I met them when Nick had just joined the Real Techniques brand and I was the first in line for a like meet and greet event. And Nick was like, oh, you know, which of the brushes do you have? I was like, all of them. And she's like, ha ha ha, oh, which ones? I'm like, no, 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 all of them. Like, oh wait, no, I need this one. And I bought like the one I was missing. And she was just so floored that, you know, someone from the US has all those brushes and knows all their videos. And they are just fantastic people. And I will always support them and watch them. They are just amazing, amazing women. So yes. Vintage Jackie Pixie Woo will forever be my must subscribe, must watch, never miss a video YouTubers. All right, we're down to the last three questions. What is your favorite movie? So I have two, because I don't pick, I don't pick favorites. I pick multiple favorites. Um, my favorite movie that I've seen, oh goodness. Sorry guys, I got my eyes, so if my eye starts tearing up, um, but the show must go on. So my favorite movies are one, Pirates of the Caribbean, the first one, Obsessed, Love, Orlando Bloom is just, yeah, Orlando Bloom, let's just, we'll just leave it at, at that. Um, I've seen that movie over four, four or five hundred times. Um, when that movie first came on DVD, I watched it every single day. Like, not like actively, like in the background, it was my background music. So yeah, that movie, I have seen them all, all the movies in theaters. All of them. Um, yeah, I love those movies. They make me, I am a like pirate history nerd, like actual history of pirates nerd. I study that. Yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean, one of my favorite movies of all time. And then my other favorite is My Neighbor Totoro. It is a very special movie um, to me and my husband and I just, I love it, I love Totoro. How can you not love Totoro? And so, yeah, so Pirates of the Caribbean and Totoro. That really, <laughs> both those, I'm like, sorry, I'm looking off at this Totoro mug that's staring at me um, from <laughs> my desk. Um, so yeah, Totoro, Pirates of the Caribbean, that's, that really kind of describes, you know, me. I am piratey and wenchy and type who goes to Renaissance fairs. And then I'm also Totoro. I am like the snuggly Kigurumi wearing type, so yeah. Hey. Wendy, what are some of your favorite TV shows? See, this person knew how to ask this question. What are some? Well, as I mentioned, I'm a big Star Trek nerd. So um, right now my husband and I are currently re-watching Deep Space Nine from the beginning. I love, um, I'm trying to think what else we're watching. I am a giant Supernatural fan. Um, yeah, it's been going 12 seasons and I am so ready for season 13 to start this fall. Um, and huh, what else? Now that I've been like asked a question where I can give you lots of answers, I feel like I don't have them. Um, what's, so yeah, Supernatural. Star Trek. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Do I like watch Lucifer? I love Lucifer. That show is so underrated and underloved. Lucifer is a fantastic show and crazy ex girlfriend. I'm still catching up on season two, but I love the premise. I love musicals. I love that a, you know a woman who loved musicals and loves being a dorky comedic woman while still being gorgeous was like, I'm gonna make a TV show where I could have a musical number every episode because that's what I want to do with my life and. She He's finding tremendous success, so um, yeah, congrats, Rachel Bloom. I'm <laughs> you're doing what I want to do, so yeah. <laughs> All right, and last question: PC or Mac? Wow, we're still framing the Christian like that. That's such a funny question to ask, cause I am a Mac. I was raised since the early '90s on Apple. It's um, not all I've ever had. I've had one PC in my life and when I took it to college it got so many viruses from being attached to a college internet that it forgot its own operating system and I lost all my papers and all my photos from my senior year of high school because that computer is now just a giant paperweight of nothingness. Um, so yeah, I am an Apple user through and through. Um, but my husband 
is a PC. His personal like laptop computer is an Apple, but he builds PCs for fun. He is a big computer nerd type. I think he just did something beyond PC and is doing something with Linux now. So yeah, he's the computer nerd and I am just thankful to have married my personal IT guy. Um, but yeah, so my household is a PC and Mac cohabitating household, but I'm a Mac and my husband is whatever doesn't break. He likes all computers as long as they cooperate and function as they are intended. So, yeah. Thank you guys for joining me for this get to know me video. Thank you to all my recent subscribers and watchers. This channel is just getting off the ground. I'm so excited. I have lots of exciting things coming throughout this year and I'm really excited to see where this channel goes. So if this is somehow your first video with me and you're wondering who the heck she is, or if you see all my videos and you're still wondering who the heck she is, I hope that answered some questions. But otherwise, I have tons of exciting content coming. I've done some great videos that I really love. I really um, am here with my lookbooks to encourage body positivity. I'm not trying to tell you how to dress your body, I'm just trying to inspire you to either try something you haven't, or if there's an outfit that you're feeling that you can't do, and I'm wearing something more outrageous, I hope it inspires you to, you know, step a little bit outside your comfort zone and try that outfit that you've been holding in the closet for the day you feel you finally can, because today is that day. And yeah, um, I will see you guys next time. Bye!